My name is Piotr Zuszyński and this uh, topic is about uh, active defense in practice. Uh, I'll go quite rapidly through, through the slides because uh, I have quite a lot, lot of them. So hold on, uh, keep your shoes on and uh, okay, let's start. So basically, uh, shortly about me, I'm a security consultant at Trustway Spider Labs. Uh, basically, I enjoy security and among other things, but uh, let's move to another slide. So this presentation is about the uh, the results of my, my private research uh, of, of, act, of using active defense in practice. Uh, the first part will be about, uh, about the new technique that, uh, that I have developed to basically to slow down uh, your attackers to keep them from staying, keep them out from staying low, low profile while they analyze your system and providing them a, as little information that's well, only possible. Uh, the second part will be a, will, will be example based, uh, and uh, I will present you uh, new 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 attacks for for the software that uh, I have taken from the internet. Uh, this is the software that is used for scanning and uh, and exploiting your your systems. So basically, uh, at the end the, 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 there will be uh, there will be a POC demo for one of the well known port, port scanners. Uh, I hope you like it. So basically, we can start with the first part. Uh, this this part is mainly focused on the reconnaissance phase. So basically, uh, the most important part of every reconnaissance phase is the port scan. I have uh, taken on, on my target uh, an map because, as we know, it's the most popular tool. So basically, it's quite possible that somebody will be using it to scan your system. Here we have a typical example where somebody is trying to scan your system, he gets all of the information, all of the running services within an instance. And uh, yeah, that's not exactly what we'd like to share with, with, with our, let's say, offenders. Uh, basically, the, this information can be used as, as another steps to, to, to carry out some more sophisticated uh, uh, attacks. So I thought, what would be the, the, the most uh, the worst case scenario for, for a person scanning or trying to get uh, a, view, a view of, running, of, of your running services on, on your system. So basically, what if, for example, all of the ports were open and what if on every port there was actually uh, a valid or it appears to be valid, a valid service uh, listening. And the, your attacker has, has, uh, has to basically, as usual, get uh, a view of all running valid services on your remote system. So basically, I wrote this tool, which is a proof of concept and still work in progress, uh, that basically implements that, that, that ID. So when you want to, to get a, a full view of, of, of the remote system, like you know, you, you try, go through all of the ports, try to get all of the services in identified, well, your attack will, will need a lot of patience because as I've seen, basically, uh, as I've tested, well, all of the ports will be open. He will have to send like about 120 megabytes of, of data, and the scan will take approximately. Right, stop talking. <laughs> so. so we have a tradition at DEF CON. First time speakers need to do a shot on stage. Let's give him a round of applause for getting selected. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Thanks for, for coming. <laughs> now, now we have to see if he can pick up where he left off in the technical talk. So you, you guys judge how well he does. Hey, I'm from Poland. Come on. It's just one shot. <laughs> so uh, coming back, yeah. So basically, you get our attackers get nice, juicy output. 65,000 or more uh, valid services identified by Nmap. Of course, uh, I, I focus on Nmap, but, but basically it can be any other port scanner, but since it's so popular, so why not uh, that too? If you go through, through the listing, you can see different services, uh, like Telnet, there's even a backdoor if you can see. So basically, the, among that, there, there's some or probably your service running, which is valid and can be, could be possibly exploited. But yeah, try to find it. It's not so easy, I guess. And somewhere in the, when, it, when, when the attackers go through your 
through uh, the service scan, they can find a hidden message. <laughs> so basically, yeah, you can put any ASCII art there. So also, the the also identification results are a bit uh, strange. For example, you can see that. The, 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 the real operating system was actually Linux 3.2. Here you have like unsure results plus, you know, Unix, Windows, Linux, Solaris. Yeah, you don't know what it is. Uh, additionally, which is actually the part, the second part of the presentation, you can also control certain fields which can help you with uh, exploitation of, uh, of, of a particular software. So, yeah, aim up, there are similar results. All of the ports are open, some of them are unidentified. Uh, yeah, so what are the conclusions? Basically, the stealth scans are no longer, longer helpful with this technique because if all of the ports are open, then basically you can make a connection. If there's an open port, then there's a valid service running, all of them are open. So, uh, yeah, also identification is a bit more challenging. Uh, yeah, it's, it also forces your attackers to to generate a huge amount of, uh, of, of, of traffic, so basically you can easily detect them, or easier, it's easier. Uh, yeah, through service probes, and of course it adds some of fr frustration to, to your offenders. Some might say that it's a security by obscurity, but as far as, if, if only it works, you know, it's, that is the point. I don't know if you can f see the fish there, but uh, it's there. Yeah, so, but I'm sure that also we are thinking like, okay, fine, but I'm sure I can find some kind of bypass. So for the, that's, the, that's also the way I was thinking. So basically, uh, answering maybe some of your questions, there's no trivial way to detect, detect false signatures, apart from using some kind of uh, protocol probes. Uh, IP fragmentation and other network evasion techniques will not work because it goes through the kernel to the user space uh, program that I've written. So basically, you can fragment, fra fra use fragmentation for uh, any layer that you want. It will anyhow be assembled at the end. The only thing that will work is actually the full connect TCP DOS, but it's not, not, not a mistake in, in the idea. It's just that every software is actually vulnerable to this. I've made some tests. Uh, you can always try to mitigate this by using some of the of, of these two uh, parameters, or just try to use IP tables with uh, traffic shaper. Also, if you have any ideas, you know, for the, for the, for the bypass, send, send them to the mailing list. I'll try to, to fix the software or, I don't know, implement your, your ID. Yeah, just shortly about the ports pool. It's a user space software. It doesn't require any root, root privileges, no kernel modules. It just binds to one uh, port per instance, and then you later just configure it uh, through, through IP tables by redirecting some of the ports that you want to, I don't know, spoof. Uh, to, to local host. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's go to the good part, which is uh, uh, practical exploitation of, of, uh, of your offender's toolbox. Uh, I don't know if you have noticed, maybe the output here is not, not very uh, clear, but uh, with Nmap, you, you can control certain fields, like for example, the version fields, host fields, uh, that gives you basically a ni nice uh, attack vector possibilities. So, so it went to the, to the internet, looked for, for Google. We've Googled for, for some software that could be exploited uh, with that. Uh, and basically, the first example is, okay, it's still anonymous because the, the author haven't responded to, to, to me. Basically, if you set up on port spoof a particle payload, like on, on any port, and somebody will use Enma to scan your system, then generate a report, and basically you are able, able to inject some of JavaScript uh, code into his uh, browser, uh, let's say, context, when, when he'll be browsing the report uh, on, his, uh, on his computer. This, there's actually a nice thing about it, because you, for example, if he launches a Safari and uh, goes through the, through the uh, for the results, and basically same origin policy doesn't apply for file URI uh, handlers. It's actually, my friend Mikel Oru uh, told, me, told me this one. So there's a, a simple um, exploitation vector for this one, like port 17. You can have, have, them, have one of them. The next example is like a non-nmap. 
so just so we don't stick to the map all the time. It's just you know a proof of concept. You can basically exploit, for example, the McAfee super scan. It was it was fixed, uh, I think, a few days ago. Uh, but basically, if anyone would scan your system with with, with this particular tool and later generate a, a report, then you would be able also to inject JavaScript code into into his uh, browser context. Uh, later, you can, for example, use B for any other tool to do some post exploitation. It really depends on you what 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 are going to do. Uh, yeah. This is actually a real exploit from the internet. So I don't know if you, you can see the, the exact uh, vulnerable line, uh, but it's here. Basically, we control the content of the, of the storage file, which actually is uh, retrieved from one of the ports. So what happens here is if we set up a, like a payload, for example, who am I on port 80, uh, which is actually the to which the port the, the exploit will connect. Uh, well, if somebody will launch that exploit against your system, he will get an additional context, which, context which is uh, root. So basically, you are able to execute uh, uh, or to do OS command injection in, uh, in, in, in somebody's shell. If somebody is launching, for example, an exploit against your system, uh, it's nice about this. You can also create, a, for example, a weaponized version of this, of this, uh, of this for this payload. But uh, I won't go through, through all of the details here because, uh, I mean, for example, the, if you want to exploit the, this particular uh, line that you have a, a, a evaluation of, of, of the file content, then basically you have to go around some issues like you cannot use spaces. You can use uh, apostrophe. So basically, this should be in the in the conference materials if you want to, to use it later. But the result is that basically, if you set up such payload on, on one of your ports, uh, yeah, next time when, when somebody will launch the text exploit against your system, he won't only get a, a who am I output, but you you'll be able to, for example, download his his whole whole uh, root directory. Uh, another example is taken from the autopon script, uh, which is nice because autopon scripts go usually through all of the ports. They try to exploit the, all of the possibilities. So basically, if you have like uh, different payloads on every port, some of them might hit that particular vulnerability, and you will be able to exploit uh, your attacker's tool. In this case, we have again, uh, and this is a real line. Code. I don't know if you, you, you see the vulnerability. It's, it's rather pretty obvious. Uh, yeah, and again, what a surprise? Who am I? Will work, uh, which will result in in OS command injection again. What you can do with this, and what are the conclusions for for this uh, for for the current state of of of, of the security tools? Because uh, from what I've seen on the Internet and different tools, different uh, scanning software, software. Mo most of them, not all, but most of them are, are, are exploitable with, with simple uh, payloads, like for example, who am I, or any other escaping sequence, sequences. Especially out upon tools used by script kiddies or I, I don't know who, but uh, yeah, if, if they launch uh, the type of script uh, against your system, then basically you can also try to create an I, I named it an aggressive honeypot because you can create a, a different uh, different payloads for every port with different different uh, escaping sequences. Sequences. Then it's up to you which which uh, command you will inject. And if you want to find, for example, more uh, more vulnerable software, just go to Google. Use your Google Jutsu skills. The ones that, that I found is actually at top of a mountain, ice mountain. I mean, many, many scripts are vulnerable. You can use just your imagination while creating uh, some, some payloads. So in this case, you, you, I'm sure you'll find something. Uh, yeah, in the end, I wanted to show you a, a nice uh, proof of concept demo for, for NMAP, official NSE script, which again proves the concept. No, no, it's not nothing against the, the tool itself. Uh, okay, let's. Okay. 
up something is motorized here. Can you see it? Yeah. No? Okay. Can't see in the front. Yeah, I see Uh, right. In front here, you can see it. Amazing. Yeah, okay, then I'll t tell you. So basically, uh, First screen, you might see, uh, we set up the port spoof tool uh, uh, along with a, with a meterpreter. Second one, we, we scan the remote system. We want to check actually what's on, what's on the port 80. We can see that there is a, an Apache HTTP IBM Lotus Domino uh, in, in, in the, the old version that's exploitable. So basically what we, what we can do, so yeah, here, here is a, a reverse uh, handler for, for, on the Metasploit. The, this is uh, the latest uh, Nmap version, 6.25. So you have that, if you have that, uh, it's still uh, vulnerable. And this is the exact uh, HTTP domain and password script which basically will result in a uh, in remote arbitra arbitrary file upload. So if you launch that against, for example, the, the system we're running port spoof, you'll be able to upload uh, an arbitrary file, overwrite any, any file that's accessible with Nmap privileges. Uh, in this case, I have re written the, the script itself. So the next time, because Someone might think that it's strange that there are some strange results uh, in, in the NMAP output. So next time somebody will launch that particular script with the same uh, with the same parameters, yeah, you, he'll get pwned. Uh, he, oh, the, 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 you will get a, a remote reverse uh, meterpreter. So that's here. I know the quality is a bit low, but if you want to just go to the main website, uh, you can view it uh, online. Uh, I'll change, I'll, I'll upload it in, in a second. Uh, sorry for this, I thought it would be visible. At the end, uh, yeah. So yeah, thank you for your time and for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>